everybody, welcome back to beautiful Wales and welcome to another day with the awesome Internationals. Yeah! Right, I'm going to sneak in a quick 45 minute ride and then it's back to business. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Feeling good. Uh, I was a little bit worried that my legs were going to feel terrible this morning, but actually I was uh, pleasantly surprised they weren't too bad. So, How so this is the end of your second stint? End of my second stint. How far are we up to? We are 1,630k in. Yeah. Uh, stage 10. Stage 10. Um, I think Rianne's going to take us to stage 11 on her, her uh, ride at the moment. She's back on the bike. <laughs> yeah. That didn't sound too She's good. She's getting stuck in. <laughs> yeah. Tell us quickly about your own personal motivation for doing this. To, give, give us what's in your head when you're out there in the mornings in the early morning doing this shift. Yeah, I think you know, growing up as a as a young girl in South Africa, we saw very little um, female role models, and I, you know, I have an older brother, so I was just going to be a cricketer. Mm -hmm. um, and growing up, you realise actually you don't have the ability to play professional sports like like my brother would. Yeah, and it's just crazy, you know, with 2020 and young girls are not seeing um, you know great role models in the media, and you saw the course on. Uh, two days ago and you know that racing we should be seeing every every week um, and and that spreads across sports but you know my interest is cycling and and so I'm just hoping that we are we are closing that gender gap we, we showing some just putting some light on this it's just it's just crazy isn't it pint of Guinness please um, my dear you can have a pint of equality pint of equality <laughs> How long have you been thinking of that? It just came to me. <laughs> wow. Put that back. I don't know what I'm doing back here. What, um, what's going on? Uh, I'm just waiting for my stint. What have you broken today? Anything? No. That's nice. Well <laughs> done. No, my bike is um, creaking, oh, so we're yeah. looking at that today. Uh, I mean, it, I'm, I say it's fine. I'm still can ride it. It just makes a noise. But see if we can fix that, shall we? Yeah, because Friday we're obviously doing the Everest on an actual hill in the outdoors, so I don't want it to fail. We'll get Mo on it. He's an engineer. Yeah. What are we saying, Mo? Oh man, just this is this is what I love. This is why I'm here. <laughs> Apart from cooking, uh, like. Vegetables, roasted vegetables. I also do a bit of bike mechanic stuff. Hopefully, hopefully, problem solved. Fingers crossed. We're good. Just watched two cows resolve an issue by just ramming their heads against each other for a while until the issue is solved. Seems like a good way of getting stuff done. I tell you what, if you've never been to Wales, it is bloody cracking here. We've been spoiled. Yeah, good. Um, a bit tired. I found a bit today a bit harder than yesterday. Mm. Um, I think it was just a bit hotter. We started an hour later today. So I think um, you know, I feel like a bit sweaty. A bit sweaty. <laughs> Tell us quickly about your um, your prep for this. Because am I right to so say you, you work full time, so you had to basically training around. How, how do you fit it in? Yeah, so I'm quite a morning person. So I like to do my training in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I tend to get up around 4, 4.30, head out on the bike when the roads are dead quiet, get about 60K in before work. Nice. Um, just to get it out of the way, I don't like it like lingering over you throughout the day. So once you're home, and then yeah, full full day at work. <laughs> and how useful is it having the um, 
the platform, the online RGT online platform, so people oh, can join you while you're there. M- yeah, massively. Um, we actually had Helen Sharp, our neighbour, join today for like pretty much the whole ride. It was amazing, and you can see each other on the screen. And you Hel- know, Helen, help who each rode other. With you last, who rode this last year? Yeah, Helen's the rider that she did the the whole tour last year with the 2019 team, and yeah, it was just so cool to have her alongside, giving all the support. And we Excellent. even sent like a video and you can have a wave on the, on the <laughs> platform. It was brilliant. No, so thank you. That was awesome. Got me through today, definitely. <laughs> right. Next up, we've got something interesting today. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Who's this significant, Rob? Uh, the song is significant from Carmen last year on the tour. She was known as Two Pools Carmen. She was always trying to find a pool, and when she found one, she wasn't in just once. It was Two Pools. And what about music? Oh, the music is the Dutch dancing song. This one specifically from uh, uh, the after party, the after party when they finished the tour. Amazing. And what stage did we just reach? Oh, we just made it to stage 11. Halfway. More than halfway. Halfway. First lady to finish three stints. I mean, because that's the order it goes in, but how do you feel? I feel better than I did yesterday. Yeah? Really. So of course, we're only in phase one of the challenge. We've got part two coming up in a couple of days. Right. This isn't going to be easy by the time you've seen out this week. Tell me how important it is getting everybody kind of on the same hymn sheet and working together in the atmosphere and stuff like that. Yeah, it's good. So we're trying to keep everyone motivated and trying to push as fast as we can for this, but also holding back a little bit because we can't go into Everest being exhausted. So a lot of emphasis on recovery and stuff like that as well. And um, just quickly on the outcome, you know, from this first stage when you've done the whole distance, what's your hope? What, what do you want the headlines to read? What, what do you want the impact to be? I think it'd be pretty cool that we can ride the full length of the Tour de France within 100 hours. Sweet. That is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> what stage are the men on today? Uh, three? They're only on stage three. I think, are we on stage 11 or 12? I think so. <laughs> Sweet. Right. Time for a glass of wine for you, I think, is it? Bonjour. Yeah. May. Thank you. No peace. You're dead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Stretching out the bag. That's, just, that's the beauty of getting old. Things start to creak. <laughs> it looks beautiful, for sure. Oh, that was nice. I'm not normally jealous of many bikes. This one. This one I like. It's very sweet. This one I like. It's, um, have you felt how light it is? Yeah, I don't dare, I don't dare pick it up in case I take it's it. It's only six points. Lately, I'm in the mood for a switcher. I hit the function, hit the rose light till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money, that's a sticker. She picks a purpose, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in the mood for a changer. I leave the city and return with my changer. They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us. They wanna knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Yo, evening crew in the house. Ready for the rave. Ready for your third Call it the rave, rave stint. Rave shift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rave shift. Tell us, what's your motivation today? Today it's about sort of a, quite a broad spectrum idea, but this sort of the the finer details of pro athletes and how they're like employed by teams, like contract negotiations and things like that are really complex and different athletes, you know, are better and worse at it than other athletes. So some get a really rubbish deal. Minimum wages are only just being introduced in some women's teams, not all. Stuff like maternity leave and, um, you know, if you get injured loads and stuff like that, all that stuff is all quite grey area and not defined and so women often don't feel like safe in their employment into a pro team um, so like tightening up all that having minimum wages having maternity leave all those things need to be like worked out and 
available to all pro women. But that's a knock-on effect. I think we'll get comments from people like, you can't have a minimum wage if the team can't afford it. Well, that's a problem that needs solving and teams should be able to afford to pay their riders. So, yeah. Cool. That's what's gonna mm, fire me up today. Come on then, let's get you on it. So we're coming to the close of another day. The girls are up on almost 2,000 kilometers in just over 48 hours. That's a really, really long way, 48 hours. I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone that's been commenting, liking, sharing all the posts and on these videos. It really does help, honestly. Every time you like one of the videos, every time you leave a comment, it helps boost the videos and the posts inside of Instagram and the YouTube algorithms so more people can see it. More people, we spread our message to more people every time you comment. So do us a favor, go down below, hit the like button, drop a little comment for the girls. I read most of them out to the girls so they know and they get all the support. It really does genuinely help. And don't forget, this is only part one. We've got the Everesting to come in a few days time. That's when it's gonna get really, really difficult. It's when your support's gonna matter the most. So, thank you for sticking with us so far. Like I said, comment, share, like down below. It's really appreciated. And we will see you tomorrow. But first, let's go check out Jess doing her thing. Come on. Oh,